Act Three of the Tragedy of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Act Three, Scene One, A Public Place. Enter Mercutio, Benvolio, and Men. Benvolio. I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulets abroad, and if we meet we shall not scape a brawl, for now these hot days is the mad blood stirring. Mercutio. Thou art like one of these fellows that, when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his sword upon the table, and says, God send me no need of thee, and by the operation of the second cup draws him on the drawer when indeed there is no need. Benvolio, am I like such a fellow? Mercutio, come, come, thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy, and as soon moved to be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. Benvolio, and what too? Mercutio, nay, and there were two such, we should have none shortly, for one would kill the other. Thou, why, thou wilt quarrel with a man that hath a hair more or a hair less in his beard than thou hast. Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts, having no other reason but because thou hast hazel eyes. What eye but such an eye would spy out such a quarrel? Thy head is as full of quarrels as an egg is full of meat, and yet thy head hath been beaten as addle as an egg for quarrelling. Thou hast quarrelled with a man for coughing in the street, because he hath wakened thy dog that hath lain asleep in the sun. Didst thou not fall out with a tailor for wearing his new doublet before Easter, with another for tying his new shoes with an old ribband? And yet thou wilt tutor me from quarrelling? Benvolio, and I were so apt to quarrel as thou art, any man should buy the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. Mercutio, the fee simple, ho oh, simple. Enter Tybalt and others. Benvolio, by my head, here come the Capulets. Mercutio, by my heel, I care not. Tybalt, follow me close, for I will speak to them. Gentlemen, good den. A word with one of you. Mercutio, and but one word with one of us? Couple it with something, make it a word and a blow. Tybalt, you shall find me apt enough to that, sir, and you will give me occasion. Mercutio. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Tybalt. Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. Mercutio. Consort? What dost thou make us minstrels? And thou make minstrels of us. Look, to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make you dance. Zounds, consort. Benvolio, we talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw unto some private place and reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Mercutio, men's eyes were made to look and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure. Enter Romeo. Tybalt, well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. Mercutio, but I'll be hanged, sir if he wear your livery. Mary, go before to field, he'll be your follower. Your worship in that sense may call him man. Tybalt. Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Romeo. Tybalt. The reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Therefore, farewell. I see thou knowest me not. Tybalt. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore turn and draw. Romeo. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so, good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Mercutio. O oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission! Allah staccata carries it away. Draws. Tybalt, 
you rat-catcher, will you walk? Tybalt. What wouldst thou have with me? Mercutio. Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives, that I mean to make bold with all, and as you shall use me hereafter, dry, beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword out of his pitcher by the ears? Make haste, lest mine be about your ears, ere it be out. Tybalt, I am for you. Draws. Romeo. Gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up. Mercutio. Come, sir, you passato. They fight. Romeo. Draw, Benvolio, beat down their weapons. Gentlemen, for shame, forbear this outrage. Tybalt, Mercutio, the prince expressly hath forbid this bandying in Verona streets. Hold, Tybalt, good Mercutio. Tybalt, under Romeo's arm, thrusts Mercutio in and flies with his followers. Mercutio, I am hurt. A plague on both your houses. I am sped. Is he gone and hath nothing? Benvolio, what? Art thou hurt? Mercutio, I. Ay, a scratch, a scratch. Mary, tis enough. Where is my page? Go, villain, fetch a surgeon. Exit page. Romeo. Courage, man, the hurt cannot be much. Mercutio. No, tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but tis enough. Twill serve. Ask for me to-morrow, and you shall find me a grave man. I am peppered. I warrant for this world. A plague on both your houses. Zounds, a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat, to scratch a man to death, a braggart, a rogue, a villain, that fights by the book of arithmetic. Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. Romeo, I thought all for the best. Mercutio, help me into some house, Benvolio, or I shall faint. A plague on both your houses. They have made worms meat of me. I have it, and soundly, too. Your houses! Exit, supported by Benvolio. Romeo. This gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got this mortal hurt in my behalf, my reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, that an hour hath been my kinsman. O oh, sweet Juliet! Thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor's steel. Enter Benvolio. Benvolio. O Romeo, Romeo, brave Mercutio's dead! That gallant spirit hath aspired the clouds, which too untimely here did scorn the earth. Romeo. This day's black fate on mo days doth depend. This but begins the woe others must end. Enter Tybalt. Benvolio. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Romeo. Alive in triumph, and Mercutio slain? Away to heaven, respective lenity, and fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again, that late thou gavest me, for Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I or both must go with him. Tybalt, thou wretched boy, that didst consort him here, shalt with him hence. Romeo, this shall determine that. They fight. Tybalt falls. Benvolio, Romeo, away, be gone! The citizens are up, and Tybalt slain. Stand not amazed. The prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Hence be gone away. Romeo. Oh, I am fortune's fool. Benvolio. Why dost thou stay? Exit Romeo. Enter citizens. Citizen. Which way ran he that killed Mercutio? Tybalt, that murderer. Which way ran he? Benvolio. There lies that Tybalt. Citizen. Up, sir, go with me. I charge thee in the prince's name obey. Enter prince, attended, old Montague, Capulet, their wives, and others. Prince. Where are the vile beginners of this fray? 
Benvolio. O oh, noble prince, I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man, slain by young Romeo, that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Capulet's wife. Tybalt, my cousin, O oh, my brother's child, O oh, prince, O oh, husband, O oh, the blood is spilled of my dear kinsman. Prince, as thou art true, for blood of ours shed blood of Montague. O oh, cousin, cousin, Prince. Benvolio, who began this bloody fray? Benvolio. Tybalt, here slain, whom Romeo's hand did stay. Romeo, that spoke him fair, bid him bethink how nice the quarrel was, and urged withal your high displeasure. All this, uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, could not take truce with the unruly spleen of Tybalt deaf to peace, but that he tilts with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast, who, all as hot, turns deadly point to point, and with a martial scorn, with one hand beats cold death aside, and with the other sends it back to Tybalt, whose dexterity retorts it. Romeo, he cries aloud, hold friends, friends part, and swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points, and twixt them rushes, underneath whose arm an envious thrust from Tybalt hit the life of stout Mercutio. And then Tybalt fled, but by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge, and to it they go like lightning, for ere I could draw to part them was stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell did Romeo turn and fly, this is the truth, or let Benvolio die. Capulet's wife. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this black strife, and all those twenty could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Prince. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio. Who now the prince of his dear blood doth owe? Montague, not Romeo, prince, he was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. Prince, and for that offence immediately we do exile him hence. I have an interest in your hate's proceeding. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding, but I'll immerse you with so strong a fine, that you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses, nor tears nor prayers shall purchase out abuses. Therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste, else when he is found, that hour is his last. Bear hence this body, and attend our will. Mercy but murderers, pardoning those that kill. Exunt. Scene two, Capulet's Orchard. Enter Juliet alone. Juliet. Gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds, towards Phoebus' lodging. Such a wagoner as Phaethon would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love performing night, that runaway eyes may wink, and Romeo leap to these arms untalked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauties, or, if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Come, civil knight, thou sober-suited matron, all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match, played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods, hood my unmanned blood, bathing in my cheeks, with thy black mantle till strange love, grown bold, Think true love acted simple modesty. Come, night, come, Romeo, come, thou day and night, for thou wilt lie upon the wings of night, whiter than new snow upon a raven's back. Come, gentle night, come, loving, black-browed night, give me my Romeo, and when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars 
and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun oh i have bought the mansion of a love but not possessed it and though i am sold not yet enjoyed so tedious is this day as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them oh here comes my nurse enter nurse with cords and she brings news and every tongue that speaks but romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence now nurse what news what hast thou there the cords that romeo bid thee fetch nurse ay ay the cords throws them down juliet ay me what news why dost thou wring thy hands nurse ah we're a day he's dead he's dead he's dead we are undone lady we are undone alack the day he's gone he's killed he's dead juliet can heaven be so envious nurse romeo can though heaven cannot oh romeo romeo whoever would have thought it romeo juliet what devil art thou that dost torment me thus this torture should be roared in dismal hell hath romeo slain himself say thou but i and that bare vowel i shall poison more than the death-darting eye of cockatrice i am not i if there be such an eye or those eyes shut that make the answer i if he be slain say i or if not no brief sounds determine of my weal or woe nurse i saw the wound i saw it with mine eyes god save the mark here on his manly breast a piteous corse a bloody piteous corse pale pale as ashes all bedaubed in blood all in gore blood i swounded at the sight juliet oh break my heart poor bankrout break at once to prison eyes ne'er look on liberty vile earth to earth resign and motion here and thou and romeo press one heavy buyer nurse o oh, tybalt tybalt the best friend i had o oh, courteous tybalt honest gentleman that ever i should live to see thee dead juliet what storm is this that blows so contrary is romeo slaughtered and is tybalt dead my dear loved cousin and my dearer lord then dreadful trumpet sound the general doom for who is living if those two are gone nurse tybalt is gone and romeo banished romeo that killed him he is banished juliet o oh god did romeo's hand shed tybalt's blood nurse it did it did alas the day it did juliet o oh, serpent heart hid with a flowering face did ever dragon keep so fair a cave beautiful tyrant fiend angelical dove-feathered raven wolvish ravening lamb despised substance of divinest show just opposite to what thou justly seemst a damned saint an honourable villain o oh, nature what hadst thou to do in hell when thou didst bower the spirit of a fiend in mortal paradise of such sweet flesh was ever book containing such vile matter so fairly bound oh that deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace nurse there's no trust no faith no honesty in men all perjured all forsworn all not all dissemblers ah where's my man give me some aqua vita these griefs these woes these sorrows make me old shame come to romeo juliet blistered be thy tongue for such a wish he was not born to shame upon his brow shame is a shame to sit for tis a throne where honour may be crowned sole monarch of the universal earth oh what a beast was i to chide at him nurse will you speak well of him that killed your cousin juliet shall i speak ill of him that is my husband ah poor my lord 
what tongue shall smooth thy name when i thy three hours wife have mangled it but wherefore villain didst thou kill my cousin that villain cousin would have killed my husband back foolish tears back to your native spring your tributary drops belong to woe which you mistaking offer up to joy my husband lives that tybalt would have slain and tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband all this is comfort wherefore weep i then some word there was worser than tybalt's death that murdered me i would forget it fain but oh it presses to my memory like damned guilty deeds to sinners minds tybalt is dead and romeo banished that banished that one word banished hath slain ten thousand tybalts tybalt's death was woe enough if it had ended there or if sour woe delights in fellowship and neatly will be ranked with other griefs why followed not when she said tybalt's dead thy father or thy mother nay or both which moderate lamentation might have moved but with a rearward following tybalt's death romeo is banished to speak that word is father mother tybalt romeo juliet all slain all dead romeo is banished there is no end no limit measure bound in that word's death no words can that woe sound where is my father and my mother nurse nurse weeping and wailing over tybalt's corse will you go to them i will bring you thither juliet wash they his wounds with tears mine shall be spent when theirs are dry for romeo's banishment take up those cords poor ropes you are beguiled both you and i for romeo is exiled he made you for a highway to my bed, but I, a maid, die maiden widowed. Come, cords, come, nurse, all to my wedding bed, and death, not Romeo, take my maiden head. Nurse, hie to your chamber, I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I wot well where he is. Hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll to him. He is hid at Lawrence's cell. Juliet, oh, find him. Give this ring to my true knight, and bid him come to take his last farewell. Exunt. Scene three. Friar Lawrence's cell. Enter Friar Lawrence. Friar. Romeo, come forth, come forth, thou fearful man. Affliction is enamoured of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. Enter Romeo. Romeo, father, what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance at my hand that I yet know not? Friar, too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. Romeo, what less than doomsday is the prince's doom? Friar, a gentler judgment vanished from his lips, not body's death, but body's banishment romeo ha banishment be merciful say death for exile hath more terror in his look much more than death do not say banishment friar hence from verona art thou banished be patient for the world is broad and wide romeo there is no world without verona walls but purgatory torture hell itself hence banished is banished from the world and world's exile is death then banishment is death mistermed calling death banishment thou cuttest my head off with a golden axe and smilest upon the stroke that murders me friar o deadly sin o rude unthankfulness thy fault our law calls death but the kind prince taking thy part hath rushed aside the law and turned that black word death to banishment this is dear mercy and thou seest it not romeo tis torture and not mercy heaven is here where juliet lives and every cat and dog and little mouse every unworthy thing live here in heaven and may look on her but romeo may not 
more validity, more honourable state, more courtship lives in carrion flies than Romeo. They may seize on the white wonder of dear Juliet's hand, and steal immortal blessing from her lips, who even in pure and vestal modesty still blush, as thinking their own kisses sin. But Romeo may not, he is banished. This may flies do, when I from this must fly. They are free men, but I am banished? And sayest thou yet that exile is not death? Hadst thou no poison mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sudden mean of death, though ne'er so mean, but banished to kill me, banished? O oh, friar, the damned use that word in hell, howling attends it. How hast thou the heart, being a divine, a ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, in my friend professed to mangle me with that word banished? Friar, thou fond madman, hear me a little speak. Romeo, oh, thou wilt speak again of banishment. Friar, I'll give thee armour to keep off that word, adversity's sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee, though thou art banished, Romeo. Yet banished? Hang up philosophy, unless philosophy can make a Juliet, displant a town, reverse a prince's doom. It helps not, it prevails not. Talk no more. Friar. Oh, then I see that madmen have no ears. Romeo. How should they, when that wise men have no eyes? Friar. Let me dispute with thee of thy estate. Romeo, thou canst not speak of that thou dost not feel. Wert thou as young as I, Juliet, thy love, an hour but married, Tybalt murdered, doting like me, and like me banished? Then mightst thou speak, then mightst thou tear thy hair, and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Knock within. Friar, arise, one knocks. Good Romeo, hide thyself. Romeo, not I, unless the breath of heart-sick groans, mist-like enfold me from the search of eyes. Knock. Friar, hark, how they knock. Who's there? Romeo, arise, thou wilt be taken. Stay a while, stand up. Knock. Run to my study, by and by, God's will. What simpleness is this? I come, I come. Knock. Who knocks so hard? Whence come you? What's your will? Nurse. Within. Let me come in, and you shall know my errand. I come from Lady Juliet. Friar. Welcome, then. Enter Nurse. Nurse. O holy Friar, O tell me, holy Friar, where is my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? Friar. There on the ground, with his own tears made drunk. Nurse. Oh, he is even in my mistress' case, just in her case. Friar, O oh, woeful sympathy, piteous predicament. Nurse, even so lies she, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, stand up, stand, and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an O? Oh? Romeo rises. Nurse, Nurse, ah, sir, ah, sir, well, death's the end of all. Romeo, spakest thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Doth not she think me an old murderer? Now I have stained the childhood of our joy, with blood removed but little from her own? Where is she, and how doth she, and what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? Nurse, oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and now falls on her bed, and then starts up, and Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. Romeo, as if that name, shot from the deadly level of a gun, did murther her, as that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman. Oh, tell me, friar, tell me, in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me that I may sack the hateful mansion." draws his dagger. Friar, hold thy desperate hand. Art thou a man? 
thy form cries out thou art thy tears are womanish thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast unseemly woman in a seeming man or ill beseeming beast in seeming both thou hast amazed me by my holy order i thought thy disposition better tempered hast thou slain tybalt wilt thou slay thyself and slay thy lady that in thy life lives by doing damned hate upon thyself why railest thou on thy birth the heaven and earth since birth and heaven and earth all three do meet in thee at once which thou at once wouldst lose fee fee thou shamest thy shape thy love thy wit which like a usurer aboundest in all and usest none in that true use indeed which should be deck thy shape thy love thy wit thy noble shape is but a form of wax digressing from the valour of a man thy dear love sworn but hollow perjury killing that love which thou hast vowed to cherish thy wit that ornament to shape and love misshapen in the conduct of them both like powder in a skilless soldier's flask is get a fire by thine own ignorance and thou dismembered with thine own defence what rouse thee man thy juliet is alive for whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead there art thou happy tybalt would kill thee but thou slewest tybalt there art thou happy too the law that threatened death becomes thy friend and turns it to exile there art thou happy a pack of blessings light upon thy back happiness courts thee in her best array but like a misbehaved and sullen wench thou poutest upon thy fortune and thy love take heed take heed for such die miserable go get thee to thy love as was decreed ascend her chamber hence and comfort her but look thou stay not till the watch be set for then thou canst not pass to mantua where thou shalt live till we can find a time to blaze your marriage reconcile your friends beg pardon of the prince and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation go before nurse commend me to thy lady and bid her hasten all the house to bed which heavy sorrow makes them apt unto romeo is coming nurse o oh lord i could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel o oh, what learning is my lord i'll tell my lady you will come romeo do so and bid my sweet prepare to chide nurse here is a ring she bid me give you sir hi you make haste for it grows very late exit romeo how well my comfort is revived by this friar go hence good night and here stands all your state either be gone before the watch be set or by the break of day disguised from hence sojourn in mantua i'll find out your man and he shall signify from time to time every good hap to you that chances here give me thy hand tis late farewell good night romeo but that a joy past joy calls out on me it were a grief so brief to part with thee farewell exeunt scene four capulet's house enter old capulet his wife and paris capulet things have fallen out sir so unluckily that we have had no time to move our daughter look you she loved her kinsman tybalt dearly and so did i well we were born to die tis very late she'll not come down to-night i promise you but for your company i would have been abed an hour ago paris these times of woe afford no tune to woo madam good night commend me to your daughter lady i will and know her mind early to-morrow to-night she's mewed up to her heaviness capulet sir paris i will make a desperate tender of my child's love i think she will be ruled in all respects by me nay more i doubt it not 
wife go you to her ere you go to bed acquaint her here of my son paris's love and bid her mark you me on wednesday next but soft what day is this paris monday my lord capulet monday ha ha well wednesday is too soon thursday let it be a thursday tell her she shall be married to this noble earl will you be ready do you like this haste we'll keep no great ado a friend or two for hark you tybalt being slain so late it may be thought we held him carelessly being our kinsman if we revel much therefore we'll have some half a dozen friends and there an end but what say you to thursday paris my lord i would that thursday were to-morrow capulet well get you gone a thursday be it then go you to juliet ere you go to bed prepare her wife against this wedding day farewell my lord light to my chamber ho afore me it is so very very late that we may call it early by and by good night exeunt scene five capulet's orchard enter romeo and juliet aloft at the window juliet wilt thou be gone it is not yet near day it was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree believe me love it was the nightingale romeo it was the lark the herald of the morn no nightingale look love what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east night's candles are burnt out and jocund day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops i must be gone and live or stay and die juliet yond light is not daylight i know it ay it is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torch-bearer and light thee on the way to mantua therefore stay yet thou needst not to be gone romeo let me be taken let me be put to death i am content so thou wilt have it so i'll say yon grey is not the morning's eye tis but the pale reflex of cynthia's brow nor that is not the lark whose notes do beat the vaultry heaven so high above our heads i have more care to stay than will to go come death and welcome juliet wills it so how is't my soul let's talk it is not day juliet it is it is high hence be gone away it is the lark that sings so out of tune straining harsh discords and unpleasing sharps some say the lark makes sweet division this doth not so for she divideth us some say the lark and loathed toad changed eyes oh now i would they had changed voices too since arm from arm that voice doth us affray hunting thee hence with hunts up to the day oh now be gone more light and light it grows romeo more light and light more dark and dark our woes enter nurse nurse madam juliet nurse nurse your lady mother is coming to your chamber the day is broke be wary look about juliet then window let day in and let life out exit romeo farewell farewell one kiss and i'll descend he goeth down juliet art thou gone so my lord my love my friend i must hear from thee every day in the hour for in a minute there are many days oh by this count i shall be much in years ere i again behold my romeo romeo farewell i will omit no opportunity that may convey my greetings love to thee juliet oh thinkest thou we shall ever meet again romeo i doubt it not and all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come juliet o oh god i have an ill-divining soul methinks i see thee 
now thou art below as one dead in the bottom of a tomb either my eyesight fails or thou lookest pale romeo and trust me love in my eye so do you dry sorrow drinks our blood adieu adieu exit juliet o fortune fortune all men call thee fickle if thou art fickle what dost thou with him that is renowned for faith be fickle fortune for then i hope thou wilt not keep him long but send him back lady within ho daughter are you up juliet who is that calls it is my lady mother is she not down so late or up so early what unaccustomed cause procures her hither and her mother lady why how now juliet juliet madam i am not well lady evermore weeping for your cousin's death what wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears and if thou couldst thou couldst not make him live therefore have done some grief shows much of love but much of grief shows still some want of wit juliet yet let me weep for such a feeling loss lady so shall you feel the loss but not the friend which you weep for juliet feeling so the loss i cannot choose but ever weep the friend lady well girl thou weepest not so much for his death as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. Juliet. What villain, madam? Lady. That same villain, Romeo. Juliet, aside. Villain, and he be many miles asunder. God pardon him. I do with all my heart. And yet no man like he doth grieve my heart. Lady. That is because the traitor murderer lives. Juliet. I, madam, from the reach of these my hands would none but I might venge my cousin's death. Lady, we will have vengeance for it, fear thou not. Then weep no more, I'll send to one in Mantua, where that same banished runagate doth live, shall give him such an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt company, and then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Juliet, indeed i never shall be satisfied with romeo till i behold him dead is my poor heart so for a kinsman vexed madam if you could find out but a man to bear a poison i would temper it that romeo should upon receipt thereof soon sleep in quiet oh how my heart abhors to hear him named and cannot come to him to wreck the love i bore my cousin tybalt upon his body that hath slaughtered him lady find thou the means and i'll find such a man but now i'll tell thee joyful tidings girl juliet and joy comes well in such a needy time what are they i beseech your ladyship lady well well thou hast a careful father child one who to put thee from thy heaviness hath sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not nor i looked not for juliet madam in happy time what day is that lady marry my child early next thursday morn the gallant young and noble gentleman the county paris at st peter's church shall happily make thee there a joyful bride juliet now by st peter's church and peter too he shall not make me there a joyful bride i wonder at this haste that i must wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo I pray you tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet, and when I do I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate, rather than Paris. These are news indeed. Lady, here comes your father, tell him so yourself, and see how he will take it at your hands. Enter Capulet and Nurse. Capulet. When the sun sets, the air doth drizzle dew. But for the sunset of my brother's son it rains downright. How now? A conduit, girl? What, still in tears? Evermore showering? In one little body thou counterfeitst a bark, a sea, a wind. For still thy eyes, which I may call the sea, do ebb and flow with tears. 
the bark thy body is sailing in this salt flood the winds thy sighs who raging with thy tears and they with them without a sudden calm will overset thy tempest-tossed body how now wife have you delivered to her our decree lady ay sir but she will none she gives you thanks i would the fool were married to her grave capulet soft take me with you take me with you wife how will she none doth she not give us thanks is she not proud doth she not count her blessed unworthy as she is that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom juliet not proud you have but thankful that you have proud can i never be of what i hate but thankful even for hate that is meant love capulet how 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 chop logic what is this proud and i thank you and i thank you not and yet not proud mistress minion you thank me no thankings nor proud me no prouds but fettle your fine joints gainst thursday next to go with paris to st peter's church or i will drag thee on a hurdle thither out you green sickness carrion i out you baggage you tallow face lady fee fee what are you mad juliet good father i beseech you on my knees hear me with patience but to speak a word capulet hang thee young baggage disobedient wretch i tell thee what get thee to church a thursday or never after look me in the face speak not reply not do not answer me my fingers itch wife we scarce thought us blessed that god had lent us but this only child but now i see this one is one too much and that we have a curse in having her out on her hilding nurse god in heaven bless her you are to blame my lord to rate her so capulet and why my lady wisdom hold your tongue good prudence smatter with your gossips go nurse i speak no treason capulet o oh god i goden nurse may not one speak capulet peace you mumbling fool utter your gravity or a gossip's bowl for here we need it not lady you are too hot capulet god's bread ay it makes me mad day night late early at home abroad alone in company waking or sleeping still my care hath been to have her matched and having now provided a gentleman of princely parentage a fair demeans youthful and nobly trained stuffed as they say with honourable parts proportioned as one's thought would wish a man and then to have a wretched puling fool a whining mammet in her fortune's tender to answer i'll not wed i cannot love i am too young i pray you pardon me but and you will not wed i'll pardon you graze where you will you shall not house with me look to it think on it i do not use to jest thursday is near lay hand on heart advise and you be mine i'll give you to my friend and you be not hang beg starve die in the streets for by my soul i'll ne'er acknowledge thee nor what is mine shall never do thee good trust to it bethink you i'll not be forsworn exit juliet is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief o oh, sweet my mother cast me not away delay this marriage for a month a week or if you do not make the bridal bed in that dim monument where tybalt lies lady talk not to me for i'll not speak a word do as thou wilt for i have done with thee exit juliet o oh god o oh nurse how shall this be prevented my husband is on earth my faith in heaven how shall that faith return again to earth unless that husband send it me from heaven by leaving earth comfort me counsel me alack alack that heaven should practise stratagems upon so soft a subject as myself what sayest thou hast thou not a word of joy 
some comfort, nurse? Nurse. Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished, and all the world to nothing, that he dares ne'er come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it needs must be by stealth. Then, since the case so stands as now it doth, I think it best you married with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dish-clout to him, an eagle, madam, hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. Beshrew my very heart, I think you are happy in this second match, for it excels your first. Or if it did not, your first is dead, or, twere as good he were, is living here, and you no use of him. Juliet, speakest thou this from thy heart? Nurse, and from my soul, too, else beshrew them both. Juliet, amen. Nurse, what? Juliet. Well, thou hast comforted me marvellous much. Go in and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father to Lawrence's cell, to make confession and to be absolved. Nurse. Mary, I will, and this is wisely done. Exit. Juliet. Ancient damnation, O most wicked fiend! Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn, or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue which she hath praised him with, above compare so many thousand times? Go, counsellor, thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain, all to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. Exit. End of Act Three.